Hello and welcome to the Roots Marriage Ministry Moment. I'm Dr. J.C. Matthews and I'm here with my wife, Gina Matthews. And we have a very exciting um, episode that we want to share with you, teaching, whatever you want to call it. But it's an impartation. It's something that uh, God has blessed us with insight on that we want to share with you. And it really is a combination of over 30 years of ministry, of life, of raising children, ups, downs, better for worse. And so um, we've learned these things um, through experience. Yes. It's something that uh, we've had to walk through. And so we don't want you to have to walk that same road and make some of the uh, mistakes that we made. Uh, and also we want to share with you some of the revelations that we've gained from those mistakes so that uh, you'll be able to make uh, that transition a successful one. Um, today we want to talk about the three C's of a successful marriage. Yes. There are three C's. Of course, there's a whole spectrum of other things that uh, one might throw in there to say, you know, you need this for a successful marriage. But there are three C's that are, I, I believe are at the, at the foundational core of a good marriage. The first one is to cultivate. I'm going to give you these and then Gina and I are going to talk about them. Uh, to cultivate. The second C is to communicate. And the, and the third C is conflict resolution. Write those down. Cultivate. The second C is to communicate. And the third C is what? Conflict resolution. So when we talk about cultivate, what, what does that bring to your mind? Planting a garden. So when you're talking about cultivating something, you are, you are creating an environment yes. that is conducive to what you want to produce. Exactly. So when you're talking about a marriage, you have to have in mind what you want the outcome to be. Yes. Um, I don't think it's wisdom to get married and not have a desired outcome. Um, not have a vision for your marriage. And so when you're talking about, just like Gina said, having a vision for your marriage, she mentioned that um, when she heard the word cultivate, she thought of a garden. Um, a garden is a place where it, it, it's not like a forest, right. you know, you, or jungle. You know, in both of those uh, scenarios, you have growth taking place, mm -hmm. but in a garden, it's pur it, it is purposeful. You have specifically in that environment or in that garden what you want to grow. Exactly. In the jungle, you could find it might look healthy and it might have all types of foliage and, and, and growth, but much of it will kill you. <laughs> yeah, very dangerous. <laughs> much of it you can't eat is not good for you. And so what we want to do is, is, is to, when, when, when we started out, we recognized that there was some cultivating that had to take place because we came from two different cultures. Very much so. And so one of the things that we, we wrestled with earlier on was trying to figure out what part of your culture do we want to make part of our culture? Mm -hmm. And then uh, what part of my culture did you want to make part of your culture? Right. And that culture, those two cultures that we bring together are not really, once it gets inside our home, Two cultures, right? Because we will further cultivate it so that it can reflect what we want to grow. Exactly, it has to become one culture. It can't be two different ways of doing things, which we see in a lot of marriages, and that's why a lot of people have trouble because they both have different ways of wanting to handle situations. And when you are working together, that doesn't work. You have to have one vision. And, and that's something that is intentional. I mean, a lot of people, especially when you're dealing with cultures, um, oftentimes those two cultures, if they're not alike, will produce conflict. Yes. And that's why we're going to talk about conflict resolution. I'm not sure if we'll get into it in this particular segment, but we'll, we'll have a part two if not. But um, the conflict is, is, doesn't have to be uh, destructive in a mm -hmm. sense if you know how to communicate. Right. You know, there, there's, there's, there's this initial struggle that you have to learn how to manage mm -hmm. 
and cause it to be constructive and not destructive. Right. It's something that is necessary. You can't avoid it. Yeah, because when you're bringing two cultures together, there's no way to avoid the changes that both people have to make in order to make the marriage work. And to be honest, if we were to be honest, one of the things, well, some of the most successful marriages that I have seen are a result of two very different people coming together. Right, right. <laughs> it's something about two people that are just alike. They can't stand one another because they're looking at each other in the face, yeah. you know, in a mirror. It, it's, it's almost like that child, that, that, that one child that's just like you mm -hmm. is the one that generally you kind of rub your head over and go, we're not going to get along. Yeah, how, you know, <laughs> how is this going to work? It's, it's because she or he is just like you. Right. But there's something about that the man and the woman that God has done that in the differences, right. that there is a complementation. Mm -hmm. there, there, there's a complementary uh, moment momentum, I'll call it, that is developed once the original conflict mm -hmm. or the struggle uh, is, uh, is addressed. Right. And dealing with that initial struggle, I think we really have to look at the Word of God because um, one of the things that we run into when we are counseling people in marriage is that um, they don't understand that there is a God way of doing things and then people's way of doing things and God has put one head to a household and a lot of people don't want to hear that but when you do things God's way things work out um, you come together and you're able to do things um, that God has put you here to do but when you are not willing to do that and each person refuses to um, come together, there's no submission in the marriage, you're going to have a struggle. And that's something, uh, I've said this before, anything with two heads is a monster. Yes. You know, you do, God, God, God hasn't created anything that, two, that has two heads. Um, and it's because there, there has to be an order. Yes. But the, but the head has the responsibility of caring for the rest of the body. Mm -hmm. The rest of what, what takes place in the head will determine the destiny of the rest of the body. And, and that's one reason why we talked about we wanted to have as our first lesson, learning your wife. And at the same sense, we, we said the same process has to take place for husbands, yes. I mean, for, for, for wives, for their husbands, yes. and learning their husbands. Because there's a lot of um, things that um, may not make sense to you initially, or may even seem contrary, you know, initially. But through the process of what we're going to talk about here, um, employing the three C's, what you'll find out is, is that there, there are some things that you can take from that culture that they're coming from and cultivate within a culture that you, that you are trying to develop mm -hmm. to produce your own garden. It, it's important that you think about those things when getting married because um, a lot of people came out of dysfunctional families. And there are a lot of things that you don't want to bring from what you grew up with into a new household. So um, you have to come together and decide together what is going to take place and what type of culture you're going to have within your house. Yeah, and that, cu that cultivation, um, when, you, when you're talking about that culture, you have to also cultivate confidence in one another. Yes. And that will result from uh, the other person being allowed to make mistakes that other person being allowed to be themselves and the, the, the spouse um, engaging in the process of learning that individual and even uh, of valuing the other person. All those things have to be cultivated. Those aren't things that are initially... It doesn't happen automatically. Yeah, yeah. Just because you get a license that say that you're married um, doesn't mean that you're one. Right. You know, there, 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 there are some things, you know, legally and in God's eyes... But there's a whole lot of things that have to be brought into alignment mm -hmm. that you're bringing with you that you need to weed out some and you need to keep some you need to water this. You need to, you know, let, you know, let go of that. Right. And, and that's what we're talking about. Cultivation, cultivating within your home what you want to produce. Right. And, and that has to be a very intentional process. The second one is to communicate is to communicate. And um, 
when I think of communication, most people think of talking. Mm -hmm. But there's a lot of different ways of communication yeah. or to communicate. What, what's your take on that? Um, actually, I wanted to just mention one thing in regards to the cultivating okay. um, point because I, I think it's very important and the reason why a lot of people don't make it is because of the fact that they do not um, value the bond between each other. And one of the things that you mentioned is that the husband has to prefer his wife and the wife has to honor her husband. And um, in understanding that a lot of people go through so many things because um, the husband is not preferring his wife. Um, when you allow outside things to become more um, at the top of your important list, rather than your spouse and um, allowing other people to impact or um, situations, whatever it is, um, it's hard on the spouse. Right. And what, and what I call it is preferring her. One of the things that I committed to do um, earlier on, and it, and it was something that, you know, um, I didn't have the wisdom really to, to know to do this. But what I started to see was that uh, a lot of our interests initially were not, were not the same. Right. And so I started doing things that interest me and it excluded you. Mm -hmm. And so there were things that I did, like I was an athlete. So a lot of times I spent a whole lot of time working out, uh, playing, uh, doing camps and scrimmaging and working out and th that whole cycle. Mm -hmm. And if anybody's been an athlete, that, 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 that's an all day type of thing. Right. And so what I, what I started to notice was that when I came home, um, there was a disconnect mm -hmm. because all of a sudden I, I wanted her to be excited about what was actually taking me away from her. Right. <laughs> and, and, and I was not excited. <laughs> and she was not excited about it. So I couldn't understand why is it. And, 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 and of course, this is after I had finished playing college. Right. So it wasn't like that was my job, mm -hmm. you know, at, at a certain point. Then I, I had tried to, um, to, to attriculate to professional levels. And it just wasn't working out, but I still had the same habits, mm -hmm. and we were we were uh, married, so um, I took those same habits when I was single of working out and tried to apply it within the marriage context, and she and, and she actually became secondary to what I spent the what I spent the majority of my day doing, mm -hmm. and it occurred to me one day I was like. In order for me to 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 get all of her in the sense of her having confidence in me and that she is first in my life, mm -hmm. I have to demonstrate it. You know, I can't have two loves. I can't love basketball. I know there's a show out that says love and basketball. Uh, they were single mm -hmm. to uh, to uh, to start with, but you have to have uh, one love within. How, of course, you love God mm -hmm. overall, but. Within the marriage context, you have to make a decision. Right. And it has to be a decision that is made and articulated in a way that she or he understands it. Yes. And the problem that comes when you do not prefer or honor your spouse is that you start going in separate directions. Because when you feel like your spouse is not putting you before the other things, you find other things to get involved in, and you go in two separate directions. And, and that is dangerous. I've, I've, is. I've seen uh, two or three major consequences of what we're talking about, and, 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 and we may just sit right here for the remainder of the show, because I think that what uh, you so succinctly said, hey, let's take a, a moment to talk about, is the key as to why people do not understand why cert something can start uh, start out seeming so right, mm -hmm. and then all of a sudden um, it becomes toxic. Yes, because one of the two things have happened: the other person has has uh, engaged in something that has taken a priority over the under the other individual, and so the other individual 
becomes resistant to right. participating or accommodating it. Right. They may not say it, or some might say it, mm -hmm. but what it ha what happens is it develops a culture within a, of discontent. Yes. And, and conflict in the real sense. And, and the person who's involved in it can't understand that because they're saying, well, I've always done this. Mm -hmm. Well, the problem is, is that you, you probably weren't married when you started doing You that. started it and you made a vow that this individual now is going to become a priority. Right. And, and you guys are going to become one, but you are excluding that individual from having a meaningful role in what it is that you're doing right. or you have excluded them altogether. Right. Um, I think in one of the other two episodes that we did, um, you mentioned um, that you cannot be married and have a successful marriage and be just business partners. Right. Where it, you're each doing your own thing, but you live in the same household and that's just how, that's not a successful marriage. Yeah, and, and a lot of people um, get married because they feel that they're compatible. Right. In the sense that this person has this occupation, I have this occupation, our income are similar, right. so on and so forth. And then they get married, they become competitors. Right. You know, you got your bank account, I got my bank account, I got a raise or promotion, you didn't. And then, you know, sometimes that happens where it happens more quickly for the female than right. it does the male, and if that's the standard by which that relationship is based uh, as being healthy, all of a sudden imbalance comes right. in. And it, it, and it might be the other way around. The guy starts to become uh, promoted at a quicker level, and therefore he doesn't see her as, as being as valuable. Mm -hmm. um, and, and, and so that, that is a danger. Another danger of not preferring her or causing the other spouse to become a priority is is that somebody else might do that exactly outside of the marriage? Exactly, and I see this. We we talk about this a lot. Um, you can meet certain people or couples, yes, and you can see it in their eyes that there's something missing. That either the the husband is hungry, you call it hungry, mm -hmm. or the wife is hungry. hungry. That's because they ain't eating at home. You right. know, somebody's not watering their garden. Right. And that causes that person to become vulnerable. Now, listen to what I'm saying. The individual may not intentionally exude neediness. Right. But, but just predators are perceptive. Right. <laughs> you know, they're, they're, they're somebody who can discern that water is not, that, that, that guard is not being watered. Right. And you have to remember that you have an enemy who is against marriage in the first place. So you have to always be aware that there are, are things that will come against your marriage. And if you're not doing what's necessary to keep it built and protected and doing the watering and the cultivating, then the enemy has a place to come in just like he did in the Garden of Eden. He has a place to come in and we have to do what's necessary to protect and keep our marriages. Yeah, even if things are not right at home, I mean, you, you're struggling to create this garden and, and, and maybe there has developed some contention between you. Don't allow that to leak out into the public. Right, you know, right. I, I talked about this before in a sense, um, you know, a presentation, and I talked about it in a negative sense that a lot of people will put on a presentation of something that's not real. Right. But there's also a presentation that can be protective. Yes, in the sense that you don't necessarily have to, uh, you don't have to to do something that is what is, is what I call plastic. Mm -hmm. You can practice something so that it becomes real. Right. Oh. I, I, just practicing honoring the other person, despite what may be going on at home, honoring them in public is a awesome witness of God working in your life because the reason why the world doesn't look at people in the body of Christ as a great example because they see so much going on and even worse things going on in Christian marriages that they're like you know we're not going to look at that as an example it's very important to have a um, good witness 
for people out in the world. And I'm not saying that you, like you just said, being plastic. What I'm saying is that learning to honor people. There are lots of people in our lives that we may not care for or may not be our favorite person, but you don't treat them disrespectful. Mm -hmm. And that's all I'm saying in, in regards to marriage. Treat your spouse with respect, especially when you're in public, because people need to see a good example. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, one of the things that uh, we actually get complimented on, um, you know, I open the door. I open the door for my wife. I try to, whenever we're walking in public, hold hands, um, do do a lot of things objectively you know if i think of it if i think of kissing her i'll lean over and kiss her or hug her um like i said i'm i'm, I'm practicing right what you want portraying to the world i prefer her yes so if there's anybody looking in that has ill intent right they will know that 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 um that there's nothing there Right. There's no opening. Yeah, there, there, there's no opening uh, for that for that person to take advantage of, and so when whenever that that type of culture is not a developed, mm -hmm. you know, just like uh, God told Adam to dress and to keep the garden, He was like, "Listen, you're going to need to protect it from, mm -hmm. and you're going to have to maximize the productivity and the fruitfulness of right. to maintain the condition." That it's supposed to be, mm -hmm. because there's stuff outside of here. You let it in, it will destroy the garden that you've been given. Right. And so we have to be we have to be very uh, perceptive of how the enemy can use uh, insecurities, right. um, um, just any avenue to cause what you're trying to build in your house to be contaminated from mm -hmm. something from outside. Right. And so so uh, remember this. Prefer her and honor him. Mm -hmm. I, I, I'm gonna say it. I'm gonna say it again. Honor him. Mm -hmm. Now, like I said, we probably won't get further any <laughs> any further uh, than this because I'm, 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 I need to say something. Um, honoring per someone does not mean that you're their slave. Right. That's right. Um, honoring may may even honor. Honoring may even consist of if a person is not treating you right, mm -hmm. uh, that you don't retaliate, right. especially especially in public. Uh, what, I, what I'm going to do in public, I'm not going to show my disdain. Mm -hmm. I'm going to wait to have that conversation at home. at home once we get to a place where it's just where it's just us mm -hmm. so that people don't 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 see those opportunities. Right. If you will. To, to cause a discord. Um, so honoring a person does not mean that you're their doormat. Right. Honoring simply means that you recognize that this individual holds a place or a position in your life right. that God has placed honor, you know, honor upon. And if that individual is not, up, not living up to that standard, God will deal with that person. Yes, he definitely will. So in the same, in, you know, in the same sense, it goes for, for uh, preferring her. Mm -hmm. Um, your listen, listen, husband. Your your wife is the finest thing out there. That's right. Your wife is just what you need. Mm -hmm. Your wife is is there, 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 there's no other like her. I'm saying you need to That's get this. What you get in your get bed. this get this in your mind. Transform that mind because you married her. Out of all the women that that were in this world, you decided this one is the one that God has created for me and that I'm going to spend the rest of my life with. Yes. You have to be committed to developing that mindset. Yes. Through better and, and worse. For worse. Yes. For better and for worse. Again, we're talking about uh, cultivation. There's two other seeds that we're going to talk, talk about a little bit later. But you have to cultivate that type of mindset. Yes. I mean, you know, I remember after our first child, you know, and women, when they have children, they put on weight. You have to cultivate within her mind. She's still just as beautiful. She just gave life and legacy to you. Mm -hmm. and, 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 and no matter what her condition is, and I found this out, 
it, not only in our situation, but in others, her response will be, be an exact result of what you are feeding her. Yes. If you're cultivating within her mind, she's still beautiful. And, 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 and that you're honoring her, and that you prefer her, she will desire to do everything within her power. She she may not get back down to a number six or eight or ten. That's right. But yeah. but but she's not the same person that was at eight a uh, uh, ten. That's right. She, she she's just a had a, she's a mother now. Yeah. Listen to what I'm saying. This is important because I said I said this the last time. That whatever you give a woman, she's going to give you back multiplied. That's right. If you give her encouragement, if you give her life, if you're speaking life to her, if you're speaking destiny to her, she's going to help you build build oh, that life. That's definitely build that right. destiny. That's right. While at the same time, women, if you, know, if you get into a, a situation where you're married and he's not all that you thought that he was... It now becomes a responsibility to cultivate. Yes. To start to cultivate that man. Don't lower your expectations. The worst thing that a woman can do yes. for a man is it's to lower her expectations. Yep. You do not lower your expectations, but you do not at the same time dishonor him through um, battering him or, you know, nagging him because you want this or that or this is not right or that's not right. You encourage him in whatever it is that he's putting his hands to so that he can grow and become what it is that God has put him here to be. And, you know, in, in closing, what I want to emphasize too in that cultivation process, because you are dealing with um, bringing some things that are dissimilar together. You have to remove some things. You have to really emphasize something. It is an uncomfortable time. And even if you've already been married and you're married for a particular period of time and some things have become toxic and, and, and there's a lot of different things that you don't like about your marriage, the good thing about cultivation is that it can be done incrementally. Yes. It's something that doesn't just happen right, right. then and there. It's developed over a period of time. So you can start practicing watering your own garden, right. watering your wife with affection, watering with affirmation, watering with a lot of different things that we're going to talk about in upcoming lessons that comp that comprise the other two C's. Um, wives doing the exact same thing, you know, building one another, building one another up, he preferring her, her honoring him, um, practicing intimacy with one another publicly, protecting the marriage right. uh, from outside influences and not allowing um, 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 other people to influence your your environment and you will start to see as you go about that process of cultivating uh, something will happen within the home um, that is supernatural I call it spiritual yes. there, 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 there's a spiritual of uh, spiritual uh, element of unity mm -hmm. that results when you're working together for the same thing yeah. it doesn't matter how long you've been married if you want to change the culture, you just have to start cultivating a different culture. And so today we talked about culture. There's two other C's that we're going to talk about in upcoming uh, sessions. Uh, one is how to communicate. and The other one is conflict resolution. Um, I pray that this has been a blessing to you. We've, uh, we've covered a lot of different aspects of cultivation. Um, listen to this over and over again. Grab your spouse together. Uh, with you, go over it and uh, allow the Spirit of God to speak to you and to identify the things that need to stay, the things that need to go, and the things that need to grow. And God will specifically anoint you guys to do that. I'm Dr. J.C. Matthews. This is my beautiful wife, Gina, and we love you guys. We want to meet you on our very next episode. Until then, God bless you and God keep you.